You know, I love that because, uh, you know, I went to medical school in the 90s and that was sort of the prevailing wisdom too, was that fat, the fat cell is this sort of inert sack of doorknobs sort of thing, right? So it's this idea that there's no regulation. It doesn't do anything interesting. You know, it's like if you have... Uh, you know, extra doorknobs, you throw them in the sack and you can take them out of the sack, you can put them in the sack, but the sack doesn't actually do anything. And that was the idea with fat cells, right? And that's uh, that was the prevailing wisdom. And I think to some extent probably is because you when you listen to some of the people talk, even so-called experts and stuff, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you, they clearly have no idea that the whole thing is completely regulated <laughs> by hormones, predominantly insulin, because it's not a sack of doorknobs. There are times that it's the fat cell can store fat, and there's times that it can release fat. It can't release fat all the time, and it can't store fat all the time. There's a sort of hormone that lets it go in, like, like lets the energy go in, lets the energy go out, and the fat cell itself has uh, endocrine effects. And that's you know, that's something that I think is just so important. Like it's, if you don't understand that, yep. that's, that's why there's so much misconception that, oh, you could just eat a few more calories and it's just going to go into fat stores. Yeah. Only yeah. No, in, I, in a certain for, situation. That's exactly right. And uh, people like to assign a certain intelligence to cells that is not warranted. A cell doesn't have the intelligence to act on its own and, um and it doesn't know what to do because it wants to play nice with the rest of the body but how can a fat cell know what's happening in the intestines uh it because the intestines will tell it or how can the fat cell know what's happening in the blood there will be a signal one cell type will tell another cell type okay here's what's going on and this is what i need you to do and and Type 1 diabetes is the most unavoidably obvious example because as much as there are a handful, it's a small handful of hormones that do have an influence on fat cells. Thyroid hormone has an influence. Cortisol has an influence. Progesterone has an influence. And yet all of those variables can be present. And if we remove only one, none of them matter. And type 1 diabetes is the perfect example. And it also completely breaks apart this whole idea that if there's a lot of energy in the blood, in other words, lots of calories, well, then the fat cells will just take it in. But so in the type one diabetic, if they are, if there's no insulin there, there's this seemingly impossible situation based on just a purely caloric view because the blood is filled with calories. Glucose levels, there's 10 times too much glucose. Free fatty acid levels in the blood are through the roof. There's even tons of amino acids in the blood, which the fat cell isn't going to really use anyway. But suffice it to say, every the cell, the, the, the blood is loaded with calories. And yet the fat cell can't take in and store a single speck of it because it has to wait. It's an obedient child, which I pretend I have several of <laughs> sometimes because my kids are so rambunctious. <laughs> but the fat cell is waiting for its orders. It's waiting to be told what to do. And in the absence of insulin, it cannot – not only can it not hold, pull in and create fat, it cannot hold on to any fat. And so even though the blood is filled with calories, the fat cell – just continues to let its own calories out. That This is why, to me, people want to try to complicate the issue. Now, neither of us is saying energy doesn't matter, but insulin is an absolute unavoidable signal that tells the fat cell to store fat. Now, you need the calories to create the, the substance of that storage. You know, you can't have one without the other. If you try to increase insulin without in having a uh, a sufficient amount of energy, then the person just becomes uh, the central nervous system shuts off because you've locked all the energy away and there's nothing left for the brain to eat. The person goes unconscious. So that's incompatible with life. Alternatively, you can have calories through the roof. And if there's no insulin, you can't store that energy. And once again, it's a death sentence, albeit slightly slower than the other paradigm I just mentioned. So you have you cannot have obesity without both, but 
we, you and I, I know where you and I are so aligned is that we focus, we beat the drum that no one else, that so few are willing to beat. That yes, energy matters. You must have a sufficient amount, but there must, it must be preceded by a stimulus telling the fat cell what to do with that energy. And that's insulin.